One of the most remarkable stories in the Bible that seems unbelievable is that of the fish swallowing up Jonah. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah 1 verse 17, King James Version. Now, the Bible says Jonah was able to pray to God and communicate with him for those three days, while he was still in the stomach of the fish. Most Bible critics ridicule the idea of a fish swallowing up a full human being without even chewing such a person. And the fact that the person was even left breathing, thinking, and even praying, all inside the stomach of a fish. Okay, before I talk about what really went down in the belly of the fish that led to Jonah staying undigested and unharmed for those three days, I would like to talk about who Jonah was, and what made him special. Frist, Jonah was a prophet who was believed to have lived during the time Jeroboam II was the king of Israel, which should be sometimes around 793 to 753 BC. And the evidence that proves that he was a real-life person and not a fiction, a fantasy or just a myth, was when Jesus Christ himself made reference to him in Matthew 12 verse 40. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So, the fact that Jesus used the story of Jonah to give an allegory about his death and resurrection means the story is not only used in his days, but it is accepted as something that happened in real life. This proof beyond reasonable doubt that there was a certain man named Jonah, who lived at a certain time in the history of Israel, and the same man was swallowed by a fish and he survived in the belly of the fish for three days. Since we have established that there was a Jonah and this Jonah was swallowed by a fish, but did not die for three days in the stomach of the fish, and that he was vomited alive by fish through the instructions of the Lord, then I think we can move on to the next issue, which is, who is Jonah as a person and how did he end up in the fish? Now, to get the proper story on who Jonah was, I will read from 2 Kings 14 verses 23 to 27, King James Version says, In the fifteenth year of Amaziah the son of Josh, king of Judah, Jeroboam the son of Josh, king of Israel, began to reign in Samaria, and he reigned forty-one years. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from all the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. He restored the border of Israel from Lebohamath as far as the Sea of the Arabah, according to the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, which he spoke by his servant Jonah the son of Amittai, the prophet, who was from gath -hefer. For the Lord saw that the affliction of Israel was very bitter, for there was none left bond or free, and there was none to help Israel. But the Lord had not said that he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, so he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam the son of Josh. So, as you can see, the scripture says Jonah was a prophet, the son of Amittai from gath -hefer. He was the prophet that prophesied against the evil committed by the king of Israel, Jeroboam, who reigned in Samaria in those days, and he also predicted the ascension of Rehoboam II as the king of Israel. This gives a clear picture of the personality of Jonah, that he was a no ordinary man. He was a top prophet with the capacity to challenge kings and kingdoms and to tell them to their faces what will befall them according to the word of God. If you can remember, the reason he decided not go to Nineveh to preach to the people was the fact that God will not execute his vengeance as he promised at all. He even blamed it on God, which he believed will end up forgiving the people that sinned against him when they repent. Jonah wants God to stick to his words, no matter the repenting or pleading of the people he intends to punish. But God is not such a person, he is a merciful God that will forgive those who sinned and repented from their ways. This was what put Jonah off with the way God does his things, which he decided to abscond from the message. You see, Jonah was an olden day prophet of doom, if you will like me to explain it clearer to you. Those kinds of prophets that were always sent by God to warn the kings of those days. 
If you remember the encounter between Prophet Samuel and King Saul, or that of Elijah and King Ahab, and the rest of them, then you will understand Jonah. They were like the prophet of doom in those days. You know, a prophet of doom is a prophet that is always declaring doom and gloom to those he or she is prophesying to. He would like to see what he prophesied come to pass, at least to prove a point that his message was true. With this understanding of who Jonah was, and what his mentality was like, I believe you will agree with me that this may be one of the reasons he decided to go rogue on God. Now, it was in the process of running away from God that he found himself in the predicament of being swallowed by a fish. You see, the Bible did not say exactly the type of fish that swallowed him, but most times, we assume that the fish must be a whale. This because the whale is the biggest fish in the sea, and it is about the animal that can conveniently swallow something of the size of a man. Now, whether it was a whale or a shark that swallowed Jonah, it does really matter. What matters was the fact that he survives in the stomach of the fish for three days. You will expect that the fish that swallowed him up will chew him first, even if it did not chew him. It should at least compress him into its throat, and that compression should be enough to suffocate and kill him. Now, I will use the following points to analyze and support the possibility of Prophet Jonah surviving in the belly of the fish. Point 1. It is a miracle. Of course, it has to be a miracle to survive such an experience for three days. And remember, Jonah was a prophet. What do you expect? The Bible also explained it clearly that it was miracle. It was God that made the storm to attack the ship he was using to run away to Tarshish, and then it was God that made the fish to swallow him up. While he was in the belly of the fish, he was praying to God, which is a form of a conversation or I should just say, he was talking to God, while he was in the belly of the fish. Definitely it has to be God that will enable him to communicate in the belly of the fish. And God is the doer of miracles. After the three days, the Bible says God commanded the fish to vomit him on the dry land. So, the possibility for Jonah to survive in the belly of the fish was nothing but a sheer miracle. Okay, if you are one of those people that are always skeptical about miracles, then the second point is for you. I want to tell you that it was also possible for Jonah to survive the condition of being swallowed up through natural means. Yes, you heard me right natural means. You see, first of all, the duration the Bible is talking about. Three days and three nights is not as literal as we have today. In the ancient Hebrew timing, it was just like an idiomatic expression that talks about the start of a day and the ending of such a day. It represents only partial days and not full days. The total time will just be around 36 hours and not 72 hours as expected using today's time systems. Another thing is this. If the fish that swallowed him was a whale, then he will have air to breathe because naturally, whales have some form of air in their belly. Again, as long as the person or thing that was swallowed up was still alive like in the case of Jonah who was swallowed up alive, he could not have been digested. Digestion itself is a form of decomposition, and it can only happen if the person or thing is dead or not a living thing. This means a side miracle. Jonah could still have survived in the belly of the fish for that long and still not die or get digested by the fish. The third point is the possibility that what happened to Jonah was exactly as Jesus mentioned in Matthew. He actually died and resurrected after three days, just like Jesus did. This means when the fish swallowed Jonah, he died and all those prayers he made from the belly of the fish was carried out in the spiritual world. After which, God decided to resurrect him by making the fish to vomit him on the dry ground. This is a simple explanation with a miraculous input to it. Jonah even attested to the possibility of him being dead in the belly of fish when he mentions in Jonah 2 verse 2 that out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Now the belly of hell that he mentioned here was actually the belly of the fish. 
and his reference to belly of the fish as hell can be assumed to be the hell which people go when they die. And please, I hope you know that hell does not necessarily mean the place of punishment. Hell could simply mean the land of the dead in the days of Jonah. So, what he said literally was that he was in the land of the dead for three days. Anyway, the bottom line is, Jonah survives the belly of the fish, and that is just the most important thing. Thank you for your support.